Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking Season 5, Kitchen and Bathroom Edition. You know, one of the most ubiquitous and yet most inglorious items in any Western bathroom is the toilet paper roll holder or toilet paper dispenser. Mine, I can tell you, is a boring and sad little affair. But as I create my Gothic bathroom and I go from the mundane to the macabre, I thought, why not make things interesting? Why not create a cranial wipe? I wish! <laughs> no, what I mean is why not make a toilet paper dispenser worthy of a gothic bathroom? One that's shaped like a cranium! <laughs> and I set out to do exactly that. Take a look. Our project starts with one of these resin skulls that I've used before. They're gorgeous and very realistic, but they're hollow and very fragile, so we have to fill it with something. I decided to try Loctite Expanding Foam on this project. I've never used this product before, and it seemed like it was going to take a full can to fill the skull, but I was way off. This stuff expands and expands for what seemed like hours. I found myself constantly wiping off excess, and more just kept on coming. So lesson learned. Less is definitely more with Loctite Foam. The skull had quite a lot of excess foam when it finally cured a couple of hours later, so I scraped that all off with a wire brush. It was tedious, but it was also boring. In time, I finally got my skull all cleaned up. For the hardware, I went to Home Depot and I bought this toilet paper roll holder by Delta that came in a lovely matte black. I made the introductions and then connected these three items to see if I could figure out where I'd need to drill my hole. It seems like that's the spot. Next, I drilled a hole that was the exact same diameter as the toilet paper holder. What could go wrong? I inserted the holder and the roll of paper. And now, this was starting to look like something. I would be mounting my skull onto this wooden plaque I bought at Michael's, so the back of the skull would need to be flat. I measured it, and I figured I'd need to cut off about two inches. As it happens, this cap is about two inches tall, so I figured that I could stand the skull up and make marks while turning it, using the cap as a guide. I would be cutting my resin skull using my Dremel tool with a cutting blade attachment. Immediately, the process kicked up a ton of harmful dust, so I'd highly advise using a mask and or doing it outside. I can only show you so much of the process because I had to cover the camera to protect it from the huge amount of dust in the air. It's an understatement to say that it was a very dusty affair. But the job did get done. The resin was cut all of the way around, and fairly evenly, I'd say. I'd still need to cut through the foam inside, though. And to that end, I used a saw like this one. I will say there was something very satisfyingly morbid about cutting the skull with a saw. I felt like Dr. Frankenstein. Next, I laid down a sheet of very coarse sandpaper, and I sanded the back of my skull to be sure it would sit flush on the wooden plaque. That's looking pretty good to me. And now to work on the wooden plaque. My first step was to paint it black with Rust-Oleum Gloss Black Protective Enamel. This stuff is pretty thick, so it only took one coat to seal the wood. Now, I could leave it just like that, but since I want this to match the apothecary cabinet, I decided to distress the paint with a bit of sandpaper. And of course, that's going to give it the same old weathered finish the cabinet has. This is definitely the shabby part of the shabby chic effect. For the chic part, I decided to dry brush some silver rub and buff onto the edges of the plaque to give it a bit of interest. It's kind of subtle, but it definitely does make those ridges pop. And here's my finished plaque. For placement, I laid my skull onto the plaque, making sure to leave plenty of space for where the toilet paper is going to go. With a metallic sharpie, I marked the placement of the skull, lifting the skull to mark under it so that the marks won't show. I also marked where the toilet paper ring is going to go, and you'll see why in a minute. Now that I knew where my skull was going to go, I marked where I'm going to put some screws to help anchor the skull to the board, and then I drilled guide holes for my screws. They're going to be very long, so we don't want them to crash into the toilet roll ring inside of the skull. 
I placed two long wood screws into the holes and I drilled them all of the way through the plaque so they stuck out like this. And now I have something to stick my skull to. Once I was happy with the placement, I removed the skull and I laid a liberal amount of hot glue onto the screws, the wooden plaque, and the back of the skull as well. And then I put the skull back in place. I, of course, intend to attach mine permanently in my gothic bathroom. But if you're making yours as a Halloween decoration or as a gag or for a shoot or any other temporary purpose, here's an easy way to attach it to your wall. Simply cut out Velcro peel and stick strips and attach them to the back of your wooden plaque. Then you attach the other part of the Velcro to your bathroom wall. And then just attach the cranial wipe. Next, just slip in the toilet roll ring and a roll of toilet paper, and well, you're ready to go, so to speak. You are? Hold my drink. Yeti? Anyone? It occurred to me that somewhere in this world there had to be black toilet paper. And sure enough, there is. So, I bought six rolls. Why have a regular old gothic toilet paper dispenser when you can have one that's ready to dish out endless reams of black papery darkness? The night she calls me. And here is my final gothic toilet paper dispenser, the Cranial Wipe. What do you think? How do you now? Well, maybe we could put a crown on him and call him a royal flush. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you here next time on Gothic Homemaking.